He's a great talent, and we're so honored to have him on the show. Here's James Redhorn. What was your earliest memory of you thinking, you know, I, I think I want to be an actor? Uh, you know, I don't. Uh, you know, I certainly in high school, I uh, you know, I thought it might be fun to be in a play, and I was in a play. But I don't think at that point I was seriously thinking about making a career of being an actor. I don't think I really seriously thought about being a professional actor until I was in my uh, second year of drama school. Um, mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, maybe I should give it a try. I'm here in New York City. I'll uh, give it a shot, and I've been very, very fortunate. What, what was your, uh, I guess, your, your plan uh, before before that? What, what were you thinking? <clears throat> well, I went to, uh, I got a Master of Fine Arts, uh, so I was thinking I would probably teach. But um, I remember when I applied to drama schools, I applied to only schools that uh, conferred degrees, MFAs thinking I would teach, and uh, and the one I went to was Columbia, and uh, my decision really was based on the fact that it was in New York City. I thought, well, if I'm getting a degree in acting, I might as well do it in the uh, the center of the acting universe in New York City. So, At the time, did you think theater was going to be the main thing, or did you always, did you think... Well, I don't I'd think like I really, do... you know, when you're 21, I don't know that you really, uh, I mean, I didn't certainly have any... <laughs> Any, any long range plans i uh i just thought i would uh i you know at theater always seemed my that's that's where my experience was and uh that was where my interest was uh, certainly initially and uh, it still is which is why i still live on the east coast mm -hmm. so i can uh, still do theater right so it was certainly you know something that was uh important to me and still is you know a lot of actors who who start off on uh you know doing the theater you know they always say that you know they always talk about going back you know, to kind of recharge the batteries and so forth. And do you feel that's the same for you? Uh, yeah, well, I do. I mean, I don't, to me, it's not, uh, I mean, I was never looking at it as starting off in theater and then going on to television and movies. In many ways, television and movies are far less satisfying for the actor, it mm -hmm. seems to me. They are, they are usually more lucrative, but uh, in terms of acting, I think uh, theater is, see, I think theater is always going to be the actor's medium because, you know, I mean, there, there is a stage director, and they certainly manage the movement on the stage, and they certainly can be insightful in terms of overall concept for a production and can be very helpful to an actor. But finally, it's just you and the audience. You know, there's nothing in between. In, uh, in film, it's very much the director's medium. You mm -hmm. know, the director is the one who sets up the shots, who finally has control over the edit and the final cut and all that. It's very much a director's medium. And in television, an argument can be made that it doesn't belong to either the actors or the directors, but to the producers, the creators of the show, that everybody else is just sort of the uh, the higher gun to make the producer's vision come to life. So I think for an actor, uh, you know, and I certainly would not have been able to work in film or theater had I not had some sense of what it was to act in a play where you go from beginning, middle to end, you know. Um, but I think for an actor, I mean, theater is always the place where it's at. Right. You started going into that, I guess, the television stuff uh, pretty uh, early on. I guess, uh, uh, I guess, in the mid '70s. When you had your yeah, I mean, credit. again, you know, it wasn't like I had any real plan. It's just, you know, I, you know, my agent would send me out for things, and I would, uh, you know, fortunately uh, book some of these uh, auditions, and it's just the way it happened. Uh, you know, early in the, and certainly in the '70s, and uh, early in my career when I was doing. Uh, theater here in New York and also around the country. I was also doing commercials, but I also did a lot of uh, daytime television. Right. And, uh, you know, I had a great time doing it. I feel very fortunate to have had that opportunity. Since, I guess, film is kind of the dominant medium, I guess, for audiences, uh, you came out of the gate for some people, I guess, in the early 90s is when you started really uh, popping up in kind of these, uh, you know, these, these high level, these, these high marquee films. Yeah, you were you know, having I, all these character parts. Yeah, I think I think probably the two films that kind of got me uh, recognition in the industry were were two movies that were released within I think a month of each other. Uh, one was Scent of a Woman, and the other was Lorenzo's Oil. And right. both those movies were successful in different ways. Uh, Lorenzo's Oil was a, a substantial artistic success, and Scent of a Woman was a substantial financial success. But right. I think from that point on, people when they heard my name were able yeah. to associate it with a face they had seen on screen. So. Right. Well, I, I want to ask you about uh, Sin of a Woman. Uh, more, I guess, the Sin of a Woman slash uh, 
Carlitos Way in that he uh-huh. did two films with uh, Al Pacino. And yeah. Being a, a theater person, uh, you know, and Al's also, you know, Pacino's also from the theater and goes to film and so forth. What, what was that like to see, you know, to have those those scenes? I guess particularly in Son of a Woman, you, you get to see uh, Pacino do a, a, a big monologue. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I, Al's a... Uh... I, I say Al, I don't mean to imply that I, I know him well enough to be, uh, you know, close <laughs> friends with him. But, but uh, you know, when you're working with somebody, you call him by your first name. Yeah, right. Work. But uh, he's, a, he, he's a very shy guy. So um, I don't know that I found that his background in theater made it any easier for either of us to work with each other. It's, you know, for most actors, uh, especially those that, you know, are kind of centered on the East Coast, right. they're almost always doing a little theater at the same time, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I can't say that it really informed our relationship or our working relationship in any special way. Right. Uh, and uh, the, the one film I do want to talk about, and, uh, and I remember when this film came out, and your 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 appearance in it came out. There were actually, I, this is when you, know, you saw some um, some pieces written about you know where's this guy from and so forth, and that, that's uh, David Fincher's The Game. Oh yeah, yeah. From '97, I, I vividly remember. You play the guy ahead of the the, yeah. the game thing, and you have a great sequence where Michael Douglas, uh, you're you're basically you're inadvertently kind of bossing him around, and you got this uh, upside down pineapple sponge cake in a bag, and you're making him hold it, and he's giving you dirty looks of why am I even holding this? And so I'm I'm curious on 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 that experience of of that particular role, which you only have a couple of scenes, but uh, I, I know you made a big impression on a lot of audiences with that particular character. Well, I had a great time working on it. I, David, I had met previously. David Fincher. We had he had hired me to do a Madonna video, and <laughs> prior, which he did a lot of music videos back when right. he was starting out. And prior to that, I had met him and auditioned for him for Alien Three, a movie that which was kind of like his first big right. you know, uh, studio film. And although I didn't get the role, I did think he responded you know well to me and um i think when the game came along he just saw that role as something i could do and i, I did go in an audition for him but i think he he already had me pretty much in mind for that role which was very flattering and uh it was great fun the uh and michael douglas is terrific to work with um uh we had a good time the only thing i would say is that we did a lot of night shooting and that was only because that was when the locations were available <laughs> and i hate night shooting <laughs> right uh well, you bring that up. I, I got to back up a second. Uh, so, are you saying you were in a Madonna video, or did you I was? Just... Yeah, I was in a Madonna video. The name of I can't remember what it was. I, I think if you go to Internet Internet Movie Database, it tells you you know what it was. I, I don't, I don't think I ever saw it because I I don't really watch well, videos. <laughs> well, I I got to ask. There's a, an interesting thing. I mean, you you do theater, you do television, you do film. What's it like doing a, a music video? Well, I, you know, I approached it as if I was doing a little film, and I think probably, you know, I'm not unique in that. I think probably most actors do. You know, it was a little, uh, just a little movie. Right. So and it was, uh, uh, it was fine. I'll ask this about the directing, and, and that you've worked with, you know, you've worked with De Palma, with Fincher, you've worked with uh, Woody Allen, Ridley Scott, and the list goes on and on. And you know, these are some real heavy hitters: George Miller and so forth, Michael Cimino. <laughs> uh, so I got to wonder. Uh, is there anything common, uh, a common thread between the the good directors and, and the uh, and the not so good directors? Is there something that separates the the two? No, I you know I don't think so. Um, I, you know it's it's because it, it's kind of a, it, it continues to be a mystery. Film continues to be a mystery to me, even though I've done so many of them. I don't know why some work and some don't, and I don't always know that it's the director that makes it work and doesn't make it work. Uh, I would say personally, generally, and I've enjoyed working with every director I've worked with, and I mean that sincerely, but I think as an actor, the ones that I generally enjoy working with more are the ones that have had some theater background. I think mm-hmm. they have, because of that, uh, a vocabulary for dealing with actors that other directors who have, um, and I don't mean to put down film school by saying this, but who have trained exclusively in film schools or who came from being editors or from assistant directors, don't necessarily have, um, and I think particularly uh, of Anthony Minghella, the late Anthony Minghella, who was sensational to work with, and he of right. course 
came from a theater background, had written plays uh, and all that. And Mike Nichols is another one. Um, and so, you know, but again, I'm not, all the other directors I've had a great time working with, and, and, and some of them have been particularly helpful to me in my acting in films. Right. But, uh, Anthony Minghella certainly has been, uh, was an extraordinary man. Wow, yeah. Well, uh, let's talk a little about uh, this movie, Don McKay. And, yeah. Uh, the, the cast is pretty spectacular. I mean, Thomas Hayden Kirk, Elizabeth Shue, which we yeah. haven't seen. The amazing Melissa Leo. Yeah. Uh, Keith and Jay Goldberger was terrific. He was a terrific director. He's a young guy, and he's got great instincts, and uh, he was wonderful. And, he well, was really t- terrific. Tell us a, a little about, about the film, and that, uh, not only about, I guess, you know, what, 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 the, what is the film, but also how did it get to you, and, and what, uh, what drew you to it? Well, I, uh, what drew me to it, I mean, the, uh, my agent called me up and said, there's this script we'd like you to read, and uh, I think there's some interest in uh, them offering you a role, and I read it. I liked it very much. And it fit in nicely with my schedule because it was only a couple of days that I worked on the film, uh, and it was right before I was to go into rehearsal for a play. Mm -hmm. And, of course, actors, even though they like doing plays, or at least this actor does, you don't make any money doing plays. (laughs) (laughs) So I was grateful to have a film job that paid me some money before I went into into rehearsal for a play. Mm -hmm. And I liked it a lot. You know, it's hard to – it's it's not an easy film to explain. It's it's sort of a a coming home – I guess I could say it's sort of a coming home drama (laughs) – but it's a very black drama, and it's also kind of a black comedy. Right. Um, and I'm not going to – if I say too much about my role in it, I'm going to okay the story, I think. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. But, well, let's but, just say I, I, I play, quote-unquote, a doctor in the film. Okay. And, uh, and that's about as far as I can go, I think. Well, uh, I, I guess maybe uh, – let's see if you can answer that. Who, you said you only have a couple of days in the film, so I guess you only have a, a few scenes. Who, who do you – Share your scenes with, and, and what are those? What are well, those? I had the very good fortune of, of working exclusively with uh, with uh, with Thomas Hayden Church and with Melissa Leo and Elizabeth Chu, and I I had actually I had previously worked with Elizabeth uh, years ago in a TV miniseries called uh, Amy and Isabel. Right, right, right. So we had some experience together, um, but I had never worked with Thomas uh, or or with. Um, Melissa. With uh, Melissa, and uh, they were terrific. Tom, particularly, he was a lot of fun. We had, uh, we, I had more to do with him than anybody. Is there a difference, or a preference, or an impression, working with a veteran director or someone who's relatively new to the game? I mean, this film is uh, uh, the director is relatively new. Yeah. Is, is there, is there a difference, or is there an excitement level, or? Well, I think. Uh, um... Gee, that's a, that's an interesting question. I you know I, I think generally the younger directors are working in uh, smaller independent films, and they're frequently using uh, you know high def digital technology, mm-hmm. so that everything is kind of uh, shot and happens a lot quicker and kind of off the cuff. And in some ways, for me, I find that kind of more exciting because everybody's dealing from their first impulse. And one of the first lessons you learn in acting school, or I did anyway, was that you should always trust your first impulse. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes in a big film, uh, and that's not doesn't mean the big films aren't going to be any good, but sometimes there's so much thought put into everything and rethought and rethinking and rewrites and this and that that it gets so you get so removed from the actual creative process that you feel like you're plugging into some great grand vision that's already been laid out. Whereas right. when you're working with a young director, and this is only because young directors don't have money to do all these kind of things, Everybody's got to work very hard and very quickly and trust their first impulse, and that's very exhilarating. Mm-hmm. So well, I and, uh, that. But, I mean, in terms of the skill level, it's interesting. I, uh, I think young directors are frequently just as skilled as veteran directors. Mm-hmm. Well, and also uh, uh, on Sunday, you know, your interview will, will air tonight, but on Sunday we're going to have um, M. Emmett Walsh, who's also in, in, in the film. And, yeah. And uh, I think you've... You've worked with him. I guess you don't have any scenes in this film, but I think you've worked with him b- b- before. I did, yeah. I worked in an, I think it was an ABC after school special. Right. Uh, we worked together, and uh, it was nice to see him. And Keith David is, um, he's, he's an old uh, old friend from stage. We did uh, Othello in, uh, at, uh, at the New York Shakespeare Festival at the theater in the, in the Central Park, the Delacorte Theater. Mm-hmm. And so I've known him for a long time. So, and uh, what what uh, what's coming up next? Um, well, I um, I'm working on a, actually on a well not again this is not a long term commitment but I am doing a radio play for WMYC Radio Public Radio here in New York City. Wow! 
And uh, that'll just be a couple of days. You know, we're gonna we're gonna tape it, and then actually we're gonna also do it live. It'll be a live broadcast as well. So that's very exciting. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I have the box coming out later in the year. Right, right. And uh, at the moment, that's it. Is there a, a performance or a couple of performances you've seen the last, I guess, maybe year, whether it's stage or film, that have really kind of, you know, stood out for you? Well, I would say uh, the entire production on stage of a play called uh, August Osage County. I saw the original cast of that, and uh, that was an extraordinary production. And that certainly has stayed with me. Right. Um, and I, you know, in film, actually, I would the movie The Wrestler was uh, Mickey's uh, Mickey right. Rourke's performance, and that was extraordinary. So that stood up. And also, I thought um, Wendy and Lucy was a very special film too. Right, right. And and I guess and my final question is kind of the fun one, if uh, if it applies, is that is there a a uh, whenever one of your your films comes out, is there a particular character or you know someone every now and then they'll stop you on the street for? You know, it's interesting, and again, I think this is because I have been fortunate enough to do things in in television and film and in theater. You know, especially in the New York City area, people sometimes stop me for plays they see me in. Sometimes they stop me for. Um, a character called Bradley Rains, which I did on Guiding Light like 20 years ago, 23 <laughs> years ago. You know, it's funny, you know, and then I would say the game is, is a frequent uh, stopper, but, you know, just the other day I was in a store and somebody stopped me for Meet the Parents. So, you know, it, it, it really, there's no way to tell. I, I wouldn't say that there's one thing in particular that people stop me for. 